Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we're in Los Angeles, California at the Society of Thoracic Surgeons Conference. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Edward Soltes, who is a leading cardiac surgeon at Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Dr. Soltes, we've known each other for a long time. It is great to see you again. Nice to see you, Adam. Yeah, so we're getting a lot of new research and data here at SDS. We're also getting questions from patients coming in from all over the world. This question comes in from Chad about reoperations for the aortic valve. Chad asks, when researching reoperative techniques, I was surprised to see a dramatic difference between TAVR valve and valve and traditional surgical aortic valve re-replacement, with the latter appearing much safer for the long term. I was hoping that someday valve and valve would be a good option, but it's looking like that may not be the case. Can an expert on your team explain why the hazard ratio was nearly three times with valve and valve? Adam, Chad asks a very good question. The issue is surrounding some of the recent data that came out looking at valve and valve TAVR after a previous surgical aortic valve replacement. And exactly what Chad said is true. They found that there was a slightly higher risk of immediate complications with surgery. There was no difference in short-term mortality, but after two years, there was seemed to be an improvement in survival among the reoperative surgical patients. So that begs the question as to what's actually going on here. Well, there have been a number of developments in both arms, that is the TAVR, valve and valve ar uh, side, as well as the surgical side over the past number of years. Probably about 10 years ago, we realized that the reoperation independent risk for a surgical reoperation disappeared from risk calculators. So that is to say, we've learned over the past 20 or 30 years how to reoperate on patients very safely utilizing CAT scans, reconstructing images of the patient's inside to understand the topography so we know what to avoid and where to go. And that has afforded us much lower rates of reoperative mortality. Now, when we talk about why is a valve and valve not providing durability in terms of survival beyond two years, there may be something to the effect that's provided because you're putting a valve inside of another valve. And whenever you do that, there is a slight risk of patient prosthesis mismatch, and there are slight gradients that develop, which can't necessarily be predicted. The problem, I think, starts with the first valve. So I think patients, when, when, when they have their first valve, they have to understand very clearly that we will look very closely at their risk profile as they age to understand that risk profile and, and provide them with a risk estimate as to the reoperation, whether it's a reoperative surgery or whether it's a valve and valve. Not always, as you can see by the data, uh, not always is a valve and valve the best option. So I think it's individualized care that is required for patients. Not always uh, should we just be, be uh, offering a valve and valve after a failed uh, surgical aortic valve replacement. Dr. Soltes, very quick follow-up. I love how you brought in what I know about you is the lifetime management of valve disease. You spoke about the importance of getting the right valve the first time and how patient prosthesis mismatch can be a complication. What are you and your team at the Cleveland Clinic doing to minimize that issue for patients? Good question, Adam. So one of the things we've recognized is the choice of valve at the first operation or procedure is critical we are seeing that it is important to talk with the patient, have shared decision-making with the patient, and understand that what we need is we need to implant a valve that is ideally going to last the longest for them, but also provide a strategy for reoperation or re-replacement through a percutaneous means in the future. So what that means is appropriately sizing the valve. Many times we offer root replacements, various different types of root replacements for patients. We know, from our data at least, that minimally invasive valve surgery at the first operation confers a lesser chance of needing blood products and a shorter ICU and a quicker return to work at a subsequent procedure in the future. So we're learning a lot about the lifetime management of aortic valve disease through a lot of the research we've been doing, but the key is to have all the necessary surgical expertise uh, available so that if a patient does require a root replacement, if a patient does require a root enlargement procedure, 
Uh, we have the facility to do that, and we have the options to offer the breadth of aortic valve replacement from a Ross operation to uh, a mechanical valve, to a tissue valve, to a TAVR. Well, Dr. Soltes, on behalf of Chad and all the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world, thanks for everything you and your team are doing at Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Thanks for being with me today. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit parkvalvesurgery.com.